friends, tonight I need to do a little TLC on three of my recent knives that I did reviews because they all have a little bit of problem that I need to correct. If you remember this one here, this is the Kinfolk Green Jade Sodbuster Jr. And when I did the review on this knife, I put it under the microscope and when we looked at the tip, it didn't really have much of one. It was more like a, a butter knife or something. Just absolutely no prick to that tip at all. It's just rounded. And that's when the guy sharpened it. He really kind of boogered it up. Other than that, it's a nice looking knife. It's a nice looking sod buster. I enjoy having it in my collection. I just need to fix it. Now this Seahorse Whittler. Oh man, I really like this knife. But it was a display model. So it had scratches on the bolsters here from... Uh, sitting in the display for a couple years and also all three blades well right there they all had a a bad wire burr and this thing just wouldn't cut anything so I need to get that corrected tonight and get that blade sharpened up plus it's got two more small knives back here a coping and a pin and we're gonna get those razor sharp as well now this one this is the harvest orange and this is just a gorgeous knife. It really doesn't have any imperfections at all except for that blade. It's just not sharp at all. There's no wire burr or anything. It's just not sharpened very well. So we're going to reprofile that and get that insanely sharp edge. And we're going to use my Hapstone RS knife sharpener here along with our Venev stones. I've got three double-sided stones here and we're going to go through that set. But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it to any of your friends who might like similar knife content. Sharing the video is what really helps the channel. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to start with our kinfolk, and we're going to fix the tip on this little Sodbuster Jr. And I'm going to use my 80 grit diamond stone. Now you want to be careful, so we're going to go ahead and just set this down on an old microfiber towel here. And I'm going to use my Dawn um, Power Shot because I think that's just the best lubricant I've found so far for these stones. I mean, it is just amazing how well it works over anything else I've ever tried. Now we're just going to lay that tip in there and we're going to rock the knife, all right, because we don't want to put a flat spot. So each stroke, I'm rocking it and trying to duplicate the roundness of the tip that I want to see on there. So let's pick this up since I don't have a second camera going and I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how I rock it as I make my strokes and I'm not going in the same spot on that stone. I don't want to make a groove in that stone. So each stroke I'm trying to pass it over a new area of the stone. I'll go down the center, I'll go down to one side, I'll go down the other side. And I hold the knife at a slight angle, that way it's not really just cutting a groove into the stone. I don't want to ruin the stone, these are expensive. But anyway, we just keep working that and working it. And I'm going to cut this down because you don't want to sit here and watch me work this for 20 minutes. But it took about 20 minutes until I got the tip of that knife exactly the way I wanted it. I'm not trying to get it sharp, I'm just trying to get the profile how I want it. Now to sharpen it, we're going to mount it up here into the RS knife sharpener. And you're going to ask me, well, John, why do you have it halfway closed? Well, let me get this set here and I'll explain it to you. So I'm going to snug that up right here. So with the knife, when it is in the open position you have a little bit less flat spot for the clamp to grab a hold of and so if you close the knife halfway a lot more that tang is exposed and you have a much more stable grip on the knife and the knife won't rock around on you and that's important on these fixed angle sharpeners to get that knife mounted as uh, secure as possible. You don't want it rocking around because you have multiple angles if it's rocking around, right? Alright, so we're going to start with 80 grit on this. We have 80, uh, 150, 240, 400, 800, and 1200. That's the different grits we have, the six different grits. We're going to start with 80, 
and we're going to set our angle and on my case knives I like to be around 20 degree so I'm going to take my little electronic angle guide and I'm going to set it on here turn it on set the arm aside put it here zero it out make sure I got zero my table's a little wobbly today I need to fix that but here we go we got it at zero and then we're going to set the arm up on the blade and there's a flat spot on the arm we'll set it on there and we want to make sure we're at 20 or at 20.04 and if we want to adjust it we can use the adjusting screw right here and turn that up or down and fine tune it and I'll do that real quick now I have another video on this I'm not going to go through all the individual steps on the hapstone we're going to blow through this pretty quick I just want to hit some highlights but um, I have a video I don't get your knife education I also have other videos on assembling the hapstone RS and how to sharpen the knife on the hapstone RS I have other videos on fixing the tip on a Microtech out the front automatic so if you want to see more information on fixing broken tips I have that on there as well so this one is just doing some TLC to some case knives and we're just going to like here you know give you some quick tips use the Dawn Power Wash for your lubrication. It's a it's a great lubricator. Keeps your stones clean. Keeps them from clogging while you're sharpening. And we're going to skip ahead. We're not going to go through all the individual stones. I just want to leave enough in the film for the people that are seeing the RS for the first time. They can kind of see the idea of the fixed angle sharpener and how we use it. Now on the coarser grits, we go back and forth as we get to the finishing grits we'll just go one direction and that'll be cutting into the stone and like I'm doing here we try to clean it as we flip it and after 1200 you can see that knife is now like a razor Whoop, that was me but yeah nice huh alright so that is the kinfolk Next one up, we're going to do the same thing with our Harvest Orange Sod Buster. You can see I put tape on the blade on this one. And we're going to start with the 80 grit. And we're going to finish it with the One Direction on the 1200, which I have on there now in this view. And that's what I mean, just going one direction like that. Flipping it over, one direction. And just taking your time. And when you're done, you pull it out and get the tape off there. Wipe it clean. And on this one, I'm using the clean side of a paddle strop. And just finishing it a little bit on there. Not the compound side. Because we want the 1200. We're just putting it on the clean leather side. Just to finish it. Clean any gunk off of it. And we have a lightsaber. Look at that. Alright, let's see. We'll cut hair. Of course it'll cut hair. Man, I think it'll shave you bald. Look at that. Okay. Alright, so that one's sharp. We got one more to sharpen before we start polishing. Alright, so this is going to be the Seahorse Whittler. Let's make sure we got our angle right. We want it right at 20 degree. 19.9 is going to be close enough. Lubricate it with the Dawn Power Wash. Start with the 80 grit. We got three blades to do on this one. So we're just going to fast forward to this one again. But let me tell you, it's a joy sharpening that Warncliffe blade. And let me tell you, that thing, not only is it a lightsaber and slicing through this paper like nothing, but that tip. Man, it seemed like you could put that tip through a brick wall. And that is a sturdy blade on that thing, too. Alright, so we got the sharpening done. Now we got to do the polishing. Alright, so I recommend you be very, very careful. You don't want to lose grip on this knife and have it sling around and hit you. 
So uh, keep the knife moving at all times. Work it at the bottom of the wheel. All right. Use precaution. Make sure you wear some safety glasses. You can see I got a cardboard box that's sitting there. That way all the buffing compounds going in the box, not all over my table or my wall. When I'm done, I just take that box and throw it away, and I got a little bit of cleanup to do instead of a whole lot. Also, if the knife does sling, hopefully it'll catch that cardboard box and not come back around and stick in my chest. So don't get directly in front of it. Keep your compound on there. Working the harvest orange now. All right, getting that back spring, polishing that up, getting all those little scratches out of there. All right, be careful on the bone scales. You can burn them. You might get a little compound in there. Don't worry about it. You'll get that out later. Don't try to buff it out because you can get it hot and burn it. All right, just keep it moving. Keep it moving. You get a bunch of compound down there, just wipe it off of a rag. Don't try to buff it off, all right? Working around, getting all the different angles. Once again, getting that back spring again. This one had a lot of little scratches on it. All right, if you notice, I'm using the white compound on the one wheel. I also have green on the other side if I need to. But all the scratches on this was very fine. I had no, whoop, see? Almost lost it there, didn't I? All right, so what you can do is you can put tape on that bone too if you got like a deep scratch and you need to go to a coarser compound put some tape on there so you don't burn into that bone scale okay but I'm just doing the white so I'm not too worried about it I'm gonna get these bolsters I'm gonna go ahead and get that shield polish that shield up nice alright then I'm gonna do the blades as well on all three knives I'm doing the blades this uh, Seahorse Whittler, if you see the the uh, review I did on it, those little blades did put some scratches in the side of that of that big worn cliff. So I want to get those out while I'm at it. Doing the back of the blade, all right, sharp edge towards the bottom, not up top. I want it to catch that wheel. There's those little scratches, so I'm going to have to work those a little bit. Um, I probably spent good 15 20 minutes on this blade getting all the little scratches out but you know what it was worth it to me because when I'm done this knife is gonna look like brand new alright so I still got scratches are about half gone but I need to I need to do it some more see all that compound that's in that cardboard box that would be all over my table all over my wall if I didn't have that cardboard box there Keep it moving. Don't let it sit in one spot. Be careful. And don't let that grab the knife and take it away from you. Yeah. Normally I'd tape up the blade, but I'm actually buffing the blade. And you say, well, is it going to dull it? No, it's not going to dull it. It's actually making it sharper. Okay. It's almost like I'm stropping the edge there especially when I run it at the proper angle so, as you can see got all those little scratches right on out of there alright so now I got three knives that have been polished but they got some compound on them and I'm gonna break out my one angry kid knife oil you can get yours at oneangrykid.com. That's one word, oneangrykid.com. That's where you get the One Angry Kid knife oil. But I'm just going to go ahead and lay out a half clean microfiber towel. You can see I got compound on the knife. And I am just going to put a good little bit of my oil on here. I usually just rub it in with my thumb if you want to know the truth. I don't use any kind of brush or anything like that and I'll use the microfiber towel here and my fingernail to kind of warp it into the uh, the sharp edges there get all that compound out once again close the knife halfway so you can get all that compound out of that joint make sure that joints freed up get some oil in there because my oil is a superior lubricant and it's uh, if I didn't mention already it's non-toxic 
it's safe to use around apples bananas oranges whatever it's all food grade material in there it's not um, synthetic ATF fluid like some other brands but uh, if you notice if you see next to that shield I got a nice little bit of compound I'm just working in with my thumb a little bit and um, and take that towel and just wipe it all out of there cleans it out so oil does good good cleaner good lubricant and an excellent protectant all right look at that all those little scratches are gone looking pretty huh all right nice and shiny got a good coating of protection on it brings out that uh, harvest orange pretty nice huh I don't know. I like it. I think it looks good. What do you think? Pretty knife? Here's the harvest orange. Just got to get all that compound out of that nail nick and the edge. Once again, this harvest orange is still a little bit stiff. I, I still need to work that and get that creakiness out of it. I just haven't played with it enough yet mainly because it wasn't very sharp out of the box so I haven't used it so now that I got it razor sharp I'll start using it more and um, man I really like the color on this one it's hard to pick out my favorite saw buster anymore this has that harvest orange corn cod jig and it is just gorgeous what do you think put in the comments you think that's a pretty knife I think it is. Look at that. Alright, cleaned up pretty well, doesn't it? Got all those little scratches out of the blade. Just got to get that compound out of there. Work it a little bit, get it freed up. Well, yes, folks. I'm very happy with my little evening's project cleaning up these three knives. Like I said, tell me what you think in the comments. I do appreciate you viewing the video and hopefully you subscribe to the channel, like it, share it with your friends. Other than that, you have a good evening. Thank you.